Good morning and welcome to the faith community of St. Maria Goretti and Our Lady of the Angels Parishes. Today we celebrate the fourth Sunday of Advent. Our presider is Brother Jonathan. Please stand for our gathering procession. In the name of the Father, and the Son, and the Holy Spirit, Amen. the grace of our Lord Jesus Christ, the love of God, and the fellowship of the Holy Spirit be with you all. Uh, so today we hear in the Gospel the great Annunciation, uh, where, where Gabriel you know, asks really Mary to, to be the mother of our Lord, the mother of God, to, for Mary to to make room in her heart and her home uh, for our Savior. So as we enter this fourth Sunday of Advent, we ask God to, to help us to make room in our heart and our home um, for our Savior. Your kingdom, O Lord, shall endure forever. Lord, have mercy. We have sinned against you, yet you are faithful. Christ, have mercy. You are our rock, our Savior. Lord, have mercy. May Almighty God have mercy on us, forgive us our sins, and bring us to everlasting life. Let us pray. Pour forth, we beseech you, O Lord, your grace into our hearts that we to whom the incarnation of Christ your Son was made known by the message of an angel, may by his passion and cross be brought to the glory of his resurrection, who lives and reigns with you in the unity of the Holy Spirit, one God forever and ever. first reading on the fourth Sunday of Advent is a reading from the second book of Samuel. When King David was settled in his palace and the Lord had given him rest from his enemies on every side, he said to Nathan the prophet, here I am living in a house of cedar while the ark of God dwells in a tent. Nathan answered the king, Go, do whatever you have in mind, for the Lord is with you. But that night the Lord spoke to Nathan and said, Go, tell my servant David, thus says the Lord, should you build me a house to dwell in? It was I who took you from the pasture, from the care of the flock, to be commander of my people Israel. 
I have been with you wherever you went, and I have destroyed all your enemies before you, and I will make you famous like the great ones of the earth. I will fix a place for you, my people Israel. I will plant them so they may dwell in their place without further disturbance. Neither shall the wicked continue to afflict them as they did of old. Since the time I first appointed judges over my people Israel, I will give you rest from all your enemies. The Lord also reveals to you that he will establish a house for you. And when your time comes and you rest with your ancestors, I will raise up your heirs after you, sprung from your loins, and I will make his kingdom firm. I will be a father to him, and he shall be a son to me. Your house and your kingdom shall endure forever before me. Your throne shall stand firm forever. The word of the Lord. Responsorial song, forever I will sing the goodness of the Lord. I sing the goodness of the Lord. The promises of the Lord I will sing forever. Through all generations, my mouth shall proclaim your faithfulness. For you have said, my kingdom is established forever. In heaven, you have confirmed your faithfulness. Forever I will sing the goodness of the Lord. I have made a covenant with my chosen one. I have sworn to David, my servant. Forever will I confirm your posterity and establish your throne for all generations. Forever will I sing the goodness of the Lord. He shall say of me, you are my father, my God, the rock, my savior. Forever I will maintain my kindness towards him and my covenant with him stands firm. Forever will I sing the goodness of the Lord. A reading from St. Paul to the Romans. Brothers and sisters, to him who can strengthen you, according to my gospel and the proclamation of Jesus Christ, according to the revelation of the mystery kept secret for long ages, but now manifested through the prophetic writings and according to the command of the internal God, made known to all nations to bring about the obedience of faith to the only wise God through Jesus Christ be glory forever and ever. Amen. The word of the Lord. be with you. A reading from the Holy Gospel according to Luke. 
The angel Gabriel was sent from God to a town of Galilee called Nazareth, to a virgin betrothed to a man named Joseph of the house of David. And the virgin's name was Mary. And coming to her, he said, Hail, full of grace, the Lord is with you. But she was greatly troubled at what was said and pondered what sort of greeting this might be. Then the angel said to her, Do not be afraid, Mary, for you have found favor with God. Behold, you will conceive in your womb and bear a son, and you shall name him Jesus. He will be great and will be called the Son of the Most High. And the Lord God will give him the throne of David his father, and he will rule over the house of Jacob forever. And of his kingdom there will be no end. But Mary said to the angel, How can this be, since I have no relations with a man? And the angel said to her in reply, The Holy Spirit will come upon you, and the power of the Most High will overshadow you. Therefore the child to be born will be called Holy, the Son of God. And behold, Elizabeth, your relative, has also conceived a son in her old age. And this is the sixth month for her who was called barren, for nothing will be impossible for God. Mary said, Behold, I am the handmaid of the Lord. May it be done to me according to your word. Then the angel departed from her. The Gospel of the Lord. So today we have you know, absolutely wonderful readings, uh, especially that, that gospel, the Annunciation. And in the readings, we, we really hear you know, the, the story of the Messiah. Uh, we hear of the Messiah's origin, um, his destiny, and, and really his legacy. Uh, in the first reading, we hear the, the, the scriptural origin of the Messiah, uh, of the promised Savior. Uh, God's promise to set up a house, a royal dynasty um, for David, is really the origin and the hope of the Messiah, that there would be one. Uh, first, in thanksgiving of all the blessings God had given David, you know, he sets out to, to build a house for God, a temple. Uh, but God refuses this. Instead, God promises to build David a house. That is a line, a lineage uh, that would last forever. And that one day uh, a child would rise up from the house uh, that would rule it forever uh, through a never-ending kingdom. And that heir would be like the Son of God. Uh, but by the end of the Solomon's reign, David's very first heir, uh, things begin to fall apart. Uh, at the end of his reign, uh, David's kingdom is split in two, Israel to the north and, and Judah to the south. And after Solomon, the reign just gets worse. Most of the kings just get worse. Uh, some were better than others, but by the most part, the, the, the Davidic dynasty uh, looks shaky, is shaky. And by the time of the Babylonian exile, you know, 600 years or almost 600 years uh, before the birth of Jesus, uh, there is no king. There is no king in Israel or Judah, um, much less one from the Davidic line. And there would be no king until the birth of our Lord. Uh, but God had promised David that one day a son of his, a son of David, a son of God, would establish his kingdom forever, uh, and he would be the Messiah. This is the origin of that. And in the Gospel, in the Annunciation, we hear that this child to be born is this Messiah. And we hear this child's destiny. You know, we hear about his miraculous conception through the power of the Holy Spirit. Uh, we hear about his humanity as the child of Mary. We hear about his divinity as holy and the Son of God Most High. Uh, we hear about his authority as the one who will rule over the house of Jacob and whose kingdom will have no end. 
And we hear his mission. Uh, He is to be named Jesus, which means God saves. He will be a savior. He will be our savior. And in the second reading, in a sense, we hear, you know, the rest of the story, uh, the legacy. I mean, God did it. Through Jesus, God saved us. Um, Now, through the men and women of the church, you know, we give honor to God. Uh, We live out that salvation, and we proclaim it to the whole world. So it's all here, you know, the Messiah's origin, the Messiah's destiny in, in his legacy. And although God is the one who, you know, sets everything up, uh, he does it by using normal, everyday people, uh, everyday folks to, to work through, to save and redeem us. Uh, first, he raises up, you know, a shepherd, uh, a shepherd, David, and makes him into a king, into a dynasty. Uh, then God takes a humble and lowly virgin and makes her, you know, the mother of God, our mother. And then God takes a, a rising Jewish rabbi in, in the second reading, Paul, and, and turns him into this great missionary, um, a great apostle. So now it's our turn. You know, how are we going to let God use us for, for this child, for this Messiah, um, this child of promise, this child of destiny, this child whom we are his legacy? You know, at every turn, God's used regular folks through David, through Mary, through Paul, you know, now through you and through me. And allowing God to, to act through us, to use us, can seem daunting, uh, but it, we're not alone. You know, we have one another. We have the Holy Spirit, and, and we have the Eucharist. And Jesus in the Eucharist, you know, strengthens and energizes us so that we can proclaim the gospel. Uh, But not just the gospel, but our gospel, you know, our legacy by the witness of our lives to those we we love and care for. So how should we do this specifically, you know, this Christmas? Um, Well, that's that's certainly um, a question everyone has to answer for themselves. But I have a, a suggestion. You know, today we're celebrating the fourth Sunday of Advent. In a few days on Thursday, I think it's Thursday, Wednesday or Thursday, it's Christmas Eve. I will know when, it, when it's Christmas Eve. I'll, I will be here. Um, now, I don't know what's exactly going to happen this year because, because, you know, no one knows anything about this year. I mean, it's 2020, so this is the year of the pandemic. This is the year of restrictions. This is the year when, you know, all bets are off. Um... But typically, Christmas Eve is a time where people, you know, come to church. Those that regularly don't come, they come, you know, all of a sudden. Again, this is strange, a different year, uh, so I'm not sure this will happen this year or not. Uh, But if it happens, if people come all of a sudden that that never come otherwise, uh, there's a good chance that they they aren't going to know that they were supposed to sign up for, for Masses. Uh, this year as, as we know. So if a lot of people show up without signing up, I mean, it could be a great opportunity to get frustrated. Uh, but it could also be a great opportunity to practice our Christian faith. You know, practice patience, Christian patience, Christian charity, hospitality, uh, even joy. You know, to go out of our way to, to help make everyone feel welcome. You know, even if they're just coming right off the street. I'm not going to say anything if that happens myself um, on Christmas about it. I mean, I I guess I guess if it turns into a standing room only thing, I mean, I'll I'll have to address it somehow. Um, I mean, that would be a great problem to have. Um, Other than, but my my intention is just to welcome everyone that's here. But right now, I want to ponder just a little bit as to why, you know, this happens. This happens almost every year, maybe not this year, but almost every year, you know, folks come to Christmas. They come to the Christmas Eve Mass and and just don't come the rest of the year. You know, there must be something that brings them here um, on Christmas. There must be some attraction for that particular Mass. 
Uh, they must be attracted in some way to, to God who makes himself so gentle, that is so gentle and so kind and so eager to befriend us that, that he you know, makes himself so small, um, he makes himself a, a little baby, um, so vulnerable, so innocent, you know, so sweet, so loving, so harmless. You know, they just can't help but, but want to come and worship that God, you know, the Christ child. And they even do it, they even come joyfully to come, you know, and remember the baby Jesus. So why not come, you know, the rest of the year? Well, it's because Jesus isn't a baby the rest of the year. I think they, you know, must be afraid. They're fine with the baby Jesus, the child Jesus, who's harmless. But they're somewhat uncomfortable, you know, with the adult Jesus. The angel Gabriel, you know, his first words after Hail Mary, full of grace, was, uh, do not be afraid. And there's a reason for that. You know, the adult Jesus wants to be a big part of our life. And making God a bigger part of our life is a big deal. I mean, when God asked Mary to be the mother of his son, uh, God was asking her to change her life forever. I'm sure Mary had her own plans. I mean, she was engaged. She was engaged to be married. Uh, maybe she and Joseph, you know, were going to move to the shore, um, you know, travel. Maybe they were going to see the, the ancient world and, and possibly have a big family. We don't know. She was full of grace, so she accepted God's plans for her. Uh, but it wasn't always easy, and it never is. You know, when Jesus came to into St. Paul's life, his whole world turned upside down. I mean, this was a confident, hot-shot rabbi who thought he knew, you know, everything there was to know. Uh, but with Jesus, he found out that actually he didn't know anything. He didn't understand anything, nada, zip. And he realized he had to change, that his life was never going to be the same. You know, Jesus didn't come into the world just so we could have, you know, nice nativity scenes and, and beautiful pictures of, of Mary, you know, holding her baby child. No, Jesus came into the world so we could know God and that we could be free from sin and we could live and walk in truth and in love. And for some people, that's scary. Uh, that's limiting, or at least it seems. I mean, the adult Jesus makes demands on us. He commands us to, to care for one another. Uh, he commands us to care for those we don't even know, strangers. He asks us to, to love our enemies, uh, to quit pretending that, that everything is good, you know, out there and also in our lives when, when it's not. You know, the adult Jesus, the 52 weeks out of the year Jesus makes us uh, look it into our lives, you know, look into our choices, our attitudes and our affiliations. And it challenges them, uh, makes you ask yourself, you know, where, what is your life really about? You know, where are you going? You know, it's no wonder as our society is, you know, continually become more consumeristic, more materialistic, and, and even more, you know, narcissistic, um, that the church attendance has come down. You know, people avoid Jesus. You know, for someone caught up in all that, uh, which is all of us sometimes, uh, living and walking the light can look painful. And sometimes it is a little painful. And it's always humbling. Uh, but in the long run, we know that it's, it's freeing. And it's invigorating. And it's the only way really to live. Um, Pope Benedict the Sixteenth, uh, Pope Emeritus Benedict the Sixteenth, um, said something that I want to share at, the hom at his homily at the Mass of his inauguration as Pope. Uh, he said, Are we not perhaps all afraid in some way? If we let Christ enter fully into our lives, if we open ourselves totally to him, are we not afraid that he might take something away from us? Are we not perhaps afraid to give up something significant, something unique, something that makes life so beautiful? Do we not then risk ending up diminished and deprived of our freedom? No, 
If we let Christ into our lives, we lose nothing, nothing, absolutely nothing of what makes life free, beautiful, and great. No, only in this friendship are the doors of life opened wide. Only in this friendship is the great potential of human existence truly revealed. Only in this friendship do we experience beauty and liberation. You know, as we cel- as we prepare to celebrate Christmas, you know, Thursday or Friday, whenever it is, um, you know, let's keep this in mind that we are part of Christ. We are part of this friendship. We are the Messiah's legacy. And for those we love, those that we wish you know joined us every day of the year, every Sunday of the year, you know, let's proclaim Christ to them, not by nagging them, um, but by. by proclaiming it through the beauty of our lives, you know, the, the joy we have in our hearts. And if they ask us, you know, why, why are you so full of joy? Why is your life so beautiful? Then we'll just gently tell them uh, it's because of Jesus. You know, Jesus who's so much more than, than just a baby in the manger. Um, Jesus is an adult who may make demands on our lives, but is no one to be afraid of. Uh, in fact, Jesus is the one that makes life beautiful. Father Almighty, maker of heaven and earth, of all things visible and invisible, I believe in one Lord Jesus Christ, the only begotten Son of God, born of the Father before all ages, God from God, light from light, true God from true God, begotten not made, consubstantial with the Father, through him all things were made, for us, for our salvation. He came down from heaven, and by the Holy Spirit was incarnate the Virgin Mary, and became man. For our sake he was crucified under Pontius Pilate. He suffered death and was buried, and rose again on the third day, in accordance with the scriptures. He ascended into heaven, and is seated at the right hand of the Father. He will come again in glory to judge the living and the dead and his kingdom will have no end. I believe in the Holy Spirit, the Lord, the giver of life, who proceeds from the Father and the Son, who with the Father and the Son is adored and glorified, who has spoken through the prophets. I believe in one holy Catholic and apostolic church. I confess one baptism for the forgiveness of sins. I look forward to the resurrection of the dead and life for the world to come. Amen. O come, O key of David, come, and open wide our heavenly home. Make safe the way that leads on high, and close the path to misery. Hear now, O Lord, the prayers we bring before you. Our response will be, Come, Lord Jesus. For Pope Francis and all the members of the church, that we may be strengthened by Mary's uh, yes, to speak our own yes, and bringing forth Christ through our words and actions, we pray. Come, Come, Lord Jesus. As we look forward to the coming of the Prince of Peace, we pray for all those nations, families, and persons caught up in terrorism and hatred, that their hearts may be turned toward lasting peace, we pray. Come, Come, Lord Lord Jesus. Jesus. For all those who look upon the coming of Christmas with some sadness or dread, especially those mourning the loss of a loved one, or those with loved ones in hospitals or nursing home that they cannot visit, 
for those facing financial uncertainty at this time, that the goodness of Emmanuel, God with us, may touch them, we pray. Come, Lord, Lord Jesus. Jesus. For God's special blessing upon all the children who await the feast of Christmas with eager anticipation that they may be blessed with grateful hearts, we pray. Come, Come Lord, Lord Jesus. Jesus. For all the sick and suffering in body, mind, and spirits, especially those confined, oh, sorry, I read that one. For all those who have died, especially Ruth Pelosi, Helen Smolsky, and Nora Watt, who passed away this week, that they may share in the fullness of life with our loving joy and also the Peluso family, who we remember at this Mass. We pray. Come, Come Lord Jesus. Jesus. So, let's echo the words of, of St. Gabriel to our Blessed Mother and ask for her intercession as we conclude our prayers. Hail Mary, full of grace, the Lord is with thee. Blessed art thou among women, and blessed is the fruit of thy womb, Jesus. Holy Mary, Mother of God, pray for us sinners, now and at the hour of our death. Amen. Pray, sisters and brothers, that my sacrifice and yours may be acceptable to God, the Almighty Father. Amen. May the Holy Spirit, O Lord, sanctify these gifts laid upon your altar, just as he filled with his power the womb of the Blessed Virgin Mary. Through Christ our Lord. Amen. The Lord be with you. And with Lift up your hearts. And Let us give thanks to the Lord our God. And it is truly right and just, our duty and our salvation, always and everywhere to give you thanks, Lord, Holy Father, Almighty and Eternal God, through Christ our Lord. For all the oracles of the prophets foretold him. The virgin mother longed for him with love beyond all telling. 
John the Baptist sang of his coming and proclaimed his presence when he came. It is by his gift that already we rejoice at the mystery of his nativity, so that he may find us watchful in prayer and exultant in his praise. And so with angels and archangels, with thrones and dominions, and with all the hosts and powers of heaven, we sing the hymn of your glory, as without end we acclaim. Make holy, therefore, these gifts, we pray, by sending down your Spirit upon them like the dew fall, so that they may become for us the body and blood of our Lord Jesus Christ. At the time he was betrayed and entered willingly into his passion, he took bread, and giving thanks, broke it and gave it to his disciples, saying, Take this, all of you, and eat of it. For this is my body, which will be given up for you. In a similar way, when supper was ended, he took the chalice, and once more giving thanks, he gave it to his disciples, saying, Take this, all of you, and drink from it, for this is the chalice of my blood, the blood of the new and eternal covenant, which will be poured out for you and for many for the forgiveness of sins. Do this in memory of me. mystery of faith. Save us, Savior of the world, for by your cross and resurrection you have set us Therefore, as we celebrate the memorial of his death and resurrection, we offer you, Lord, the bread of life and the chalice of salvation, giving thanks that you have held us worthy to be in your presence and minister to you. Humbly we pray that partaking of the body and blood of Christ, we may be gathered into one by the Holy Spirit. Remember, Lord, your church spread throughout the world and bring her to the fullness of charity together with Francis, our Pope, and David, our Bishop, and all the clergy and the faithful. Remember also our brothers and sisters who have fallen asleep in the hope of the resurrection, and all who have died in your mercy. Welcome them into the light of your face. Have mercy on us all, we pray, that with the Blessed Virgin Mary, Mother of God, with St. Joseph, her spouse, with the Blessed Apostles, with St. Maria Gretti and all the saints who have pleased you throughout the ages, we may merit to be co-heirs to eternal life and may praise and glorify you through your Son, Jesus Christ. Through him, with him, and in him, O God, Almighty Father, in the unity of the Holy Spirit, all glory and honor is yours forever and ever.
the Savior's command informed by divine teaching, we dare to say, Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. Deliver us, Lord, we pray, from every evil. Graciously grant peace in our days, that by the help of your mercy we may be always free from sin and safe from all distress, as we await the blessed hope and the coming of our Savior, Jesus Christ. Lord Jesus Christ, you said to your apostles, Peace I leave you, my peace I give you. Look not on our sins, but on the faith of your church, and graciously grant her peace and unity in accordance with your will, who live and reign forever and ever. Amen. The peace of the Lord be with you always. Let us offer one another a sign of peace. takes away the sins of the world. Blessed are those who are called to the supper of the Lamb.
So for those following our celebration online, an act of spiritual communion. My Jesus, I believe that you are present in the most holy sacrament. I love you above all things, and I desire to receive you into my soul. Since I, since I cannot at this moment receive you sacramentally, come at least spiritually into my heart. I embrace you and unite myself wholly to you. Never permit me to se be separated from you. Amen. Let us pray. Having received this pledge of eternal redemption, we pray, Almighty God, that as the feast day of our salvation draws ever nearer, so we may press forward all the more eagerly to be to the worthy celebration of the mystery of your Son's nativity, who lives and reigns forever and ever. All right, please be seated a moment for the now. So there are only two weekends left to purchase lottery tickets. A $5 lottery ticket gives you a chance to win $2,500 in prize money during the 31 days of January. If you can take some to sell, please do so. Please list your name and the numbers of the tickets that you take. Uh, the Christmas Mass schedule is listed in the bulletin at St. Maria Gretti Immaculate Conception. There will be two Christmas Eve Masses, a 2 p.m. and a 10 p.m. And at Our Lady of the Angels, there will be a 4 p.m. on Christmas Eve and a 9.30 a.m. on Christmas Day. There is no obligation to come to Christmas Mass due to COVID, but if you plan to come to one of the Masses, you need to sign up today. This can be done either on our website or on the Facebook page of our parishes. If you do not have internet, please call the parish office and we can register you. Please give your phone number and email address if you have one so that we can contact you if anything changes. We will be live streaming all four masses on our Facebook site. We invite you to take a parish calendar, uh, if you haven't done so already, which are available at the back of the church. This is the last weekend to buy plaque key, which is $2 for a pack of four. Um, I am encouraging uh, men in the parish to, to sign up to do um, a spiritual exercise with me called Exodus 90. It focuses on prayer, asceticism, and fraternity. Uh, it's called Exodus 90 because it's 90 days, and it begins January 4th. Uh, and if you want to make Jesus, or God, Jesus is God, Jesus is God, uh, a greater part of your life, this is a great way to do it. There's some flyers uh, as you exit. If anyone can stay and help bring the decorations of Christmas down from the storage area, that would be great. We're doing it right after Mass. Uh, we also need help sanitizing the church immediately after Mass. If you're able to stay, please do so. And as you leave, please put down your kneelers so, so they know um, what pews need to be sanitized. Uh, do we have any birthdays or anniversaries being celebrated this week that would like to be recognized? All right, so at this time, um, we'll have our blessing of uh, the Jesus, child, child Jesus statues for our crib scenes. So if you have one, um, please take it out and, and maybe hold it, hold it up. Um, and also, if you're following online, uh, you can hold up your, your child Jesus also.
God of new beginnings and new life, as we begin this final week of the Advent season, we desire to call to mind the true meaning of our waiting as we bless the figure of your son, Jesus, which will be the center of our Christmas crib scene. We pray that you not only extend your blessing upon these figures of Jesus presented to you today, but also upon all the family members and all others who will gaze upon these figures in their Christmas cribs. May the Christ child Emmanuel, God with us, be made real and come alive more fully in our hearts and in our homes. May, these blessing, may this blessing come upon these figurines and upon all of us in this final week of Advent. In the name of the Father, Son, and the Holy Spirit. Amen. All right, please stand. The Lord be with you. And may Almighty God bless you in the Father, Son, and the Holy Spirit. The Mass is ended. Go in peace.